Today I, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, I talk to you here, and the, the only source of income of the Libyan people has been attacked by what's called Saraya Benghazi, okay, the, the Benghazi Defense Brigades. This is head by, headed by a man called Sharkasi, in total alliance with uh, Qaeda Ismail Salabi and his affiliates, and with the Islamists, the Muslim Brotherhood militias of what's called the Duru of Bin Hamid and, and others. Okay? And this is the, the, the most painful part, having been inspected okay, in a troop inspection by the defense minister called Bargati, who's the defense minister of the government of national accord of the presidential council recognized by the United States of America and by the UN. And whenever we want to change this presidential council, and I, I, I will readily admit, I'm trying to replace the presidential council, okay? And I am one of the contenders for this post. When we try to change the presidential council, we told, no, 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 you have to really be patient and you have to be inclusive. And, and as we are being patient and inclusive, these guys are attacking the oil terminals and attacking Benghazi. They tried three times to attack Benghazi. And thank God for the air power of the Libyan National Army and its determination. It's been fighting terrorists for three years without any international support. As a matter of fact, with international undermining, okay? And they've pushed back the Islamists out of Benghazi in a, in a dreadful three-year fight that has cost us something like 6,000 young people, okay? And yet, no one is helping the Libyan National Army, and they're standing by as a Qaeda army is being blessed by the UN and the, and the US into, into attacking the, the East. So it's a, there was a good statement yesterday that, that called for cessation of hostilities. But the way the statement is written, it actually equates the Libyan National Army with Qaeda troops, okay? So the policy is still there because of the, the, the new administration hasn't had a chance to revamp all the policies and to change the, the uh, various uh, embassy staff and so on. So we're still going on the previous administration's policy, okay? I came to Washington to urge you to, to quickly relook at what, what you're doing to us because um, you're not, not only not helping the army, you're actually undermining our attempt to replace the presidential council by, by simply following the, the blind policy of saying that this is the legitimate government of Libya, the early commitment of the previous administration to making things work with the Muslim Brotherhood and to actually seeing them as the key allies in, in uh, rebuilding Libya. The problem with the Muslim Brotherhood is that it's actually a transnational uh, organization with transnational aspirations. It's as simple as that. To build a country, you need people who are committed to the nation state. Okay? The, uh, that's very basic, I know, but it's very important to, to bear in mind. You cannot have partners in, in, uh, in the building of a nation who don't believe in the state, but only believe in, in being parasitical on it to build their transnational agenda. Libya, over the last six years, spent something to the tune of $200 billion, okay? of which the Libyan people have seen hardly anything. No new hospitals, no new, ro no new roads, no new schools. Where did the money go? The money went to building the resources of the Muslim Brotherhood and the Libyan Fighting Group, which is the, the, the name of the Libyan branch of Qaeda. In Libya, we had this phenomenon, which was called Ansar al-Sharia, and they used the, the black flag. They talked like bin Laden, believed the same uh, doctrines as bin Laden, the, the same uh, Salafist, jihadist, uh, uh, what I consider heretical uh, doctrine. And, and uh, they were called Ansar al-Sharia, and all of a sudden they were tolerated in Benghazi, and they were tolerated in Sirt, and they were allowed to fester in Sirt for, for years, you know? And I personally came, because I was also national security advisor to Abdullah Thini, the, the Prime Minister in the East. I came to this country several times, 2013, 2014, 2015, warning that the Islamists are taking over and that they are making Libya into their ATM machine and into their fueling uh, station or gas station and into a platform that, they, that will threaten the entire region, including Europe. But in the case of us in Libya, we kept being told by your own administration that we're supposed to be inclusive of the Muslim Brotherhood and the Libyan fighting group. And they were forced upon us again and again. Even as they lost every single election, we had two major elections. The Muslim Brotherhood and the Libyan fighting group combined and all variations of Islamists never got more than 5% of the vote. And yet we were told to give them 50% of the power 
in, in, uh, through power sharing mediated by the UNY because they happened to march on Tripoli when they lost the last election.